Today, I'm gonna to show you how to nadir a super. Hi, I'm Lauren Soda from Black Mountain Honey. Welcome to another episode of No Nonsense Beekeeping. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to nadir a super. And if you're not sure what that means, I'm gonna show you it in this video. Nadir though, it's spelled N-A-D-I-R, and all it means, the simplest thing in the world, this is No Nonsense Beekeeping, it means taking the super from above the brood box and putting it underneath the brood box. It takes you 10 seconds. What I'm gonna talk about though in this video is how you do that, when you do that, and why you do that. So I'll get my bee suit on in a minute. I'll go and show you how I do it to a colony because it is so simple. But first, a couple of questions. So why would you do a nadir? Why would you do this manipulation? And I think nadiring supers has become very, very popular for some reason, not entirely sure why. And people do it just kind of religiously. So they say, well, I'm gonna be on brood and a half. I need to nadir my super. I need to put it underneath the brood box going into winter. And they take like a full super of honey and they take it from the top and they put it underneath in the end of August, beginning of September. And I just think, what are you doing? Why are you actually doing that? What is the point? The bees have put the honey above them for a reason. And now you're putting that honey and you're putting it underneath them. So I don't quite understand that. If anybody does that and you wanna let me know why you do that, please feel free to let me know in the comments. I'm a little bit baffled. For me, the only reason I nadir supers, and I'll talk to you about it a little bit because I'm gonna show you in an example over here, is when I'm going through my supers for honey extraction, I might have four or five supers on a hive. If I'm lucky, maybe one or two if I'm not so lucky. But what I always end up with is a few frames or one super that's just nectar. There's just some nectar in it. Um, and nothing's capped. I might have say like four frames of foundation, two or three frames, like 20 or 30% capped, and then loads of frames of nectar as well. Now for me, I wanna get on and I wanna get that honey off and I wanna get it back into the brood box. But bees don't move nectar down. They don't move nectar or honey downwards. They only move it upwards. So if you ever go into your hives when they wanna flow and you go into the brood box and you're just saturated with nectar, that's what the bees do, they go out, like the bees here are doing, just magnificent. I'm gonna sit here and watch these bees in a little bit because they are going for it today. Back end of September on a Himalayan balsam flow. But they go out, they go and collect nectar, they bring it back into the brood box, they pass it to the nearest bee, they store it in the brood box, and then at night time, they start fanning that down, they start moving it up into the supers. And then the next day, the brood box is clear again. That impulse to move nectar and honey upwards is what a nadir is kind of manipulating, I guess. So the only reason that I will ever nadir a super is if I've got a really partially used super, little bit of nectar in it, and I'm thinking, well, if I go and put that into storage over winter, it's gonna ferment, and then I'm gonna end up with some manky frames. So for me, the only reason that I nadir supers is just to get the bees to clean them out. So I'll have four or five supers, like I said, if I'm lucky on a hive, I'll take off the four that are capped, maybe move some frames around as well, and then I'll get left with one super that not got much in it, might have a few frames of foundation, few frames of partially capped honey, and then a few frames of nectar as well. I'll take that box, I'll put it underneath the brood box, and then at that point you can put your feeders on as well. I'll give them a week or so, and then nine times out of 10, if you do it at the right time of the year, and I would suggest doing this kind of back end of August, early September, I know I'm doing this video a little bit late, they'll bring all of that nectar up, you can go back into the colony, and the box will be empty, and then you can just take it away. And that is always what I would recommend. I wouldn't suggest just leaving it on over winter, especially if you're doing any Varroa treatments. You don't want to taint your supers with any sort of amitraz from Apivar. And that is my process. So I'm going to get my bee suit on. I'll go and show you one colony that I've left a brood box on. So it's on double brood at the moment. And I'm just going to show you how I would nadir that super by putting it underneath. And you'll watch all of the bees take all of that honey and nectar and move it upwards. And that's how I'm going to condense them down into a single brood box for winter. Right, so this is the hive that I'm gonna show you how to nadir a super. And they are in effect on double brood here, so it's slightly different. But let's just assume the bottom box is a brood box with just brood in it, and the top box here, this top national deep, that is just a honey super. It is the simplest manipulation in the world, and we've spoken about why you do it. I'm gonna show you now how you do it. So simple though. Now, if you hadn't noticed already, these three hives are sponsored by Kimberly Clark Flint Mill, Thanks guys for the sponsorship. I think I'll get this right. You've got Andrex, Kleenex, and Huggies. So three different brands, three sponsored hives, 
much appreciated. Let's get inside and have a look how we're going to nadir this super now. So this is what I'm talking about. You get frames like this, and this is just the end of the season. This box should have come off a while ago, but I left it on and they've put a little bit more in it than I expected them to because I wanted to show you how to nadir. But this is what you're talking about. So if you look inside there, got loads of empty frames. And then on here, we've got some nectar in there as well. And we've got like, what, five or 10% of capped honey in there. I'm not gonna go to the extent of extracting frames like that because it just takes me too much time. So if you've got a box, maybe even that's not even as capped as this, that is what you're looking for when you come to do your nadirs. We're gonna take this box, all of the frames that are included in it, and we're just gonna reverse it and we're gonna put it underneath the bruise box. And what they're gonna do is they're gonna take up all of the nectar that's in here. They'll break open that honey as well. They'll move everything upstairs into the brood box. And then within a couple of weeks, I can come back and I can just remove that bottom box and then I can overwinter them on a single brood box. So in terms of a breakdown for this box here, I've got a couple of frames like that, little bit of nectar in them, little bit of capped honey in them. I've got about six or seven frames of foundation, a couple of drawn combs as well, but there's no weight to the box whatsoever. I'll just re-emphasize, do not do this if you've got like a decent amount of honey in the box. Just extract whatever you can and then you can put the remainder on the deer if you need to. You can also mix frames around from different colonies if that's something you need to do just to get them to work it. The only reason I use a deer is to clean up frames that I don't want to extract and I'll use the nectar and I'll use the honey in there to help the bees overwinter on those stores. So all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take the top box, put it off to one side, take the bottom box, put that off to one side and just flip them over. Remember, if you're doing this in a classic circumstance, I'm doing this last week of September, so I'm doing it a little bit late. We're gonna assume that there's your brood box and then you've got a queen excluded in between the two and then this is like the worst super that you've got, your last super with nothing in it. We'll remove the excluder completely. You don't need the excluder and we're gonna set it up with the nadir super underneath and then the brood box on top. So once you've got them separated, the bees are really, really happy with me today. This is what you get for trying to mess around with bees late on in the season. The brood box over there, the super over there, and I'm just gonna flip them around now. It's as simple as that. The bees, they're not happy with me. Angry, angry bees at this time of year. But what we've done is we've nadeered that super. And it was a super, it just didn't have a queen excluder underneath it. My super's now on the bottom. My brood box is now on the top. They're gonna to take all of the honey, anything usable, any nectar, any honey. They're gonna take it from this bottom box. They're gonna bring it up to this top box here. And then within a couple of weeks, probably quicker than that, I can come away and I can remove this bottom box, take it away completely, and I'll leave myself with a single box to overwinter. Now you can overwinter in this configuration now. If you really want to, you're not doing any Varroa treatments that are gonna compromise the integrity of your super foundation or your super drawn comb, then you could just leave them like this to overwinter if that's what you wanna do. But I will re-emphasize it for the third time. Don't do this. If there's loads of honey in the bottom box and the broods in the box below, all you need to do is just whip out the queen excluder and just leave it as it is. And then you'll do a reversal next year in order to get you back onto brood and a half in the correct format. Right, so we're quite clearly at a different apiary now. I just wanted to show you the second part of how to nadir a super. And this colony here, I did this a couple of weeks ago. I took all of the honey off from this apiary. And what we've got here is a brood box here. And then at the bottom, I've got my nadir super. And I put that super down there because it wasn't worth extracting, but I didn't want to leave it out. I didn't want to leave it to ferment in storage. I didn't want the bees to rob it. So I put it at the bottom of that brood box for the bees to work it up into the brood box. And I'm gonna show you the second step of it now. So hopefully what we're gonna see, bees don't always play by the books though. Hopefully what we're gonna see is the brood box is full, full of brood, full of honey, full of stores, and the bottom nadir super is completely empty. Let's get in, see if that's the case. If it's empty, we can just remove it and then the bees are ready for winter. Let's get inside, see if it's gone to plan. So over on the left-hand side, I've got my feeder there. I've got my 14 by 12 brood box. And then this is my Nadir super. And when I opened it up, I thought, oh God, there's gonna be loads of honey in there. There's gonna be loads of brood. They're just using the space to cluster up. And 
all of these frames are completely empty. Pull out a few now, show you that they're completely empty. Just be wary, the queen could be in there. That's the thing that could go wrong with this manipulation is you, you lose the queen. So just be careful, make sure the queen's not down there. But I'll show you some of these frames and I'll show you how well they've cleared them out. So there we go, you can see, you'll have to believe me, these did have nectar in, had a little bit of stores in, and now they have cleaned them out. They do not like honey underneath them and their natural instinct is to move that up. That's what they've done here. So I can safely now clear out this super, shake all of the bees back up into that brood nest. And then that's successfully nadeared the super and I can take it away now. So there we go, as simple as that. Again, this is a video I've been meaning to do for a long, long time and I've had loads of questions about it. I just wanted to clear up any myths that are out there and I wanted to give you my take on when I think it is suitable to nadir a super and it's definitely not something that I would do just as a matter of fact for every single colony every year. I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope you found it useful. As always, please hit the subscribe button. Please hit the bell so you're notified of every video and I'll see you next time.